Hello friends, today we are gonna complete our full stack social media application using React, Node.js and MySQL. Firstly, we should create a new user or login. After that, we are gonna see this homepage. And this is my timeline. It shows only my posts and my friends' posts. And also my friends' stories. I can create a new post and upload an image. When I click this button, we will see our post here immediately. I can see the comments, create a new one. I can like or dislike posts and delete my own post. Let's open up a user profile. We will fetch the user information and user posts. As you can see, he is my friend. I can follow or unfollow. And if it's my profile page, I will see this update button. When I click here, I will be able to update my user information. It's a great project to understand React and Node.js. If you didn't watch the previous video, you should definitely check. It's important because I designed these components and I explained how to use Context API and new React Router DOM features. And in this video, you will learn how to fetch data using React Query, how to use mutations, how to create advanced SQL queries, how to secure your application using JSON Web Token and Cookies, REST API basics, image uploading, and more. I hope you will enjoy it. If you want to see more apps like this, please like the video and let me know in the comments which technologies you want to see in the next projects. Okay, if you are ready, let's get started. Okay, let's open a new VS Code folder. We are gonna have two folders. API, which is our backend server, and client. And it's gonna be our React application. Let's actually clone our React design here. It's in the Lamadev GitHub repository. I will search for social. As you can see, we have this branch. I'm gonna install this inside client folder. To do that, I will copy this URL and I will clone this branch. By the way, I want to create a video about GitHub, how to use Git, what are the most common use cases, shortcuts. So if you want to see such a video, just let me know in the comments. And here I'm gonna open my terminal. I'm gonna go to the client part. And here I will say git clone branch name. Let's see what was the name. React social UI. I'm gonna paste my URL dot and enter. And they are here. Let's install our libraries. I will say yarn. And it's gonna install all necessary libraries. Okay, it's ready. As you can see, our libraries are here. And let's start our application. I will say yarn start. Okay, it's here. Before creating anything in the API, I want to create my MySQL DB and necessary tables. After that, we will create an Express server and see how to connect to MySQL and how to make CRUD operations. This section will be a little bit faster because I've already published a video about MySQL installation, tables, relationships, how to make CRUD operations. So if you didn't watch that video, you can find it in the card on the top right. If you are a complete beginner, that video will help you to understand the basics. Of course, you don't have to watch the whole video. Just watch the MySQL workbench part and express server part. And after that, you can come here and continue. So let's open up our workbench and create our DB. As you can see, this is our previous application. I'm gonna right click and create schema and its name will be social. Create schema, which is social. I'm gonna apply and that's all. And after that, let's create our tables. So I'm gonna click here, tables, and I'm gonna create new table and its name will be users. So let's write our columns. First one will be user ID. It's gonna be an integer. I will say primary key because it's gonna be the unique ID. So I will say unique and auto increment. And what else we are gonna have? Actually, let's open up our homepage. 
but we don't have any user it's not going to open it's a protected route but if you remember we have a dummy functionality here of course we are not connected to db but if i click here we are going to have a fake user inside we can see our home page right now and here i'm going to click on user and as you can see a user has a cover picture profile picture name this location let's say city or country and website of course when we register we are going to enter our username email and password also so let's create them here i will say username is going to be a string i will say not null email password I'm going to increase this string limit that because we are going to be using a crypto method so this password will be a long hashed password so it should be a little bit longer after that i will say name of course they are not null and we are going to have cover picture again it can be a little bit longer because it's going to be a url it can be null picture and profile picture I will increase here and we are going to have a city and website it can be null by the way if you want to you can store only username email and password here and you can create a new table let's say user details and you can store all those information there but we don't have many columns it's just eight columns here so it can stay like that if you want to add other details like school, work, I don't know, relationship or other things like Facebook, you should definitely create another table. But in our case, it's totally enough. Let's check again. Integer and others will be string and everything is OK, I think. I'm going to come here and I will say apply like that. It's ready. Let's create other tables. It's going to be posts. As always, ID, primary key, and we are going to have post description. Let's check here. As you can see, we are going to have this description, and we can add any image. And to add this post, of course, we should be a user. Let's increase this number. Now you'll see image. And finally, user ID. It's going to be an integer and it's going to be our foreign key of course to do that we are going to be using this button foreign key and i'm going to say user id and the reference table will be our users table i'm going to select here which column i should choose as a user id it's going to be user id and in the user table it's going to be exactly the same id basically post.user id will be equal user.id and when we delete this parent which is user we are going to delete this post also so i'm going to say on update and on delete cascade i will apply and it's ready let's see okay by the way if you forget adding something here basically you can click here and say alter table and you can add new columns you can change your foreign keys whatever you want so i want to add here created at date and it's going to be a date date time it can be not null but i'm going to leave it empty that because we are going to make some tests and writing this date time can be difficult for us so it can stay null for now after that we are going to change by the way this user will be not null every post has a user and i'm going to apply okay what else we have if you remember when i click here we can see our comments and as you can see it's exactly the same description we are not going to have any image we are going to have created at and user id create table comments quickly id description i will say not null it's going to be created at date time and user id and it's going to be integer and not now and we are going to have of course post id 
so we can see which post it belongs to and it's gonna be integer basically we are gonna have two foreign keys user and post let's create them first one will be user id and second one will be post id but remember we used same name for the post so we cannot use it again i have to change this name let's say command user id so you cannot use the same foreign key name and the reference table will be user and this one will be post let's choose here post id and id of post and for this one user id will be user id of course i'm gonna make them cascade that because when we delete our user or when we delete this post this comment will be deleted also let's say cascade and apply what else i can do the same thing for these stories as you can see we have user and we are going to have only image let's say stories id we are going to have an image image url and user id it's going to be an integer not null and image will be not null also so let's create foreign key i will say story user id and it's going to be users user id will be id of user table cascade and apply so let's create user relationships in our application we will be able to follow any user and they will be able to follow us to do that i can create another table that because going to users table and creating here follower users and followed users is not the efficient way to normalize our mysql database we should create here another table and it's going to be relationships i will say id and when we follow any user we are going to be the follower user and this user will be let's say followed user so i'm gonna store user ids here follower user id integer not null and followed user id by the way those texts are really small i cannot see them properly and i cannot zoom here if i made any typo i'm gonna correct them later okay so we are gonna have two foreign keys both are will be user let's come here follower user i'm gonna choose user table here and follower user id will be user id i will do the same thing for other user follow user again users but this time it's gonna be follow user id will be id i'll see cascade when we delete any user we are going to delete this relationship also and okay and one more thing we are going to need as you can see we have a like button here we can like any post we are going to create another table and let's say likes and we are going to have user id integer and post id let's create our keys like user id it's going to be users i'm going to choose user id here and it's going to be user id and i will do the same thing for post like post id our table will be posts post id will be id of post then we delete this post we are gonna delete this like also i will apply and that's all let's open up our api and create here our backend server you already know how to do that from the mysql video so let's install necessary libraries i'm gonna open up new terminal i'm gonna go to 
API, and I will say can add Express our backend server, MySQL, and Node. Of course, before them, I should have initialized my Node application. But anyway, I can do this right now. I will say npm init dash y. Let's open up, as you can see, our libraries and package JSON. Let's create here our main JavaScript file. It's going to be index.js. And when we start our application, I'm going to run this index.js. So let's say start to run our application. I will use nodemon index.js. And I'm going to write here type is going to be module. In this case, we will be able to import our libraries using this import key. Of course, you can use require also, but I prefer using import. And that's all. We are ready. Let's close this package JSON and create our express server. Let's close this sidebar. I'm going to say import express from express. Let's use our express function like that. And to run our application, we are going to listen any port. I'll say app.listen. We are going to listen this port number as always. And when we connect to our backend server, I'm going to just write here API working or whatever you say. Let's start. I will say yarn start or npm start. Okay, it has crashed. Of course, it's not structured. It's going to be like that. And it's ready. Let's create a route folder. I'm going to come here and new folder is going to be routes. First one will be users, posts, comments, likes, and also I'm going to create here authentication route. That because we are going to make login and register process here, not in users. And that's all I think. Let's import our express here. I will say const router and it's going to be express router. And I should export this router. So I will say export default router. In this case, we can use this user router in our index file and we can make any API request here. For example, let me show you an example and you are going to understand better. I will say get, let's say test. We are going to take a request from user and we are going to send a response. What we are going to send? Let's say it works. Let's use it in the index file. I will say import user routes users.js. Don't forget this extension, otherwise you are going to have an error. Let's make this capital like that and I'm going to use it here. I will say app.use. Let's give an endpoint for this API. I'm going to say API. You can give here a version like that. And after that, users. But I'm going to delete here. It's going to be just API and users. And whenever we visit this page, it's going to automatically go to user route. And we are going to have different endpoint here. So basically, API, users, test, and it's going to return this answer. Let's test. I will say localhost, our port number, API, users, test, and as you can see, it works. Perfect. This is how we are using Express Server routes. And one more thing I'm gonna make. Since this is a router file, writing all these operations here is not a good idea. I'm just gonna delete here and I'm going to call different functions from our controllers. Let's create controllers folder and our controllers user.js post comment like and authentication. So we are going to make all our operations here. For example, get user we are going to take request response and we are going to make 
our operations here and return our response. So I can call this function here. Of course, I should export first. I will say get user like that. Of course, JS. And that's all. When we call this endpoint, we are going to call this function. And in this function, we are going to find our user in the MySQL and return this user as an answer. Of course, not test. Let's say find. And here I'm going to write user ID. So we are going to find a specific user here using this ID. Okay. For post, it's going to be post.js. I'm going to leave it empty. Let's actually do like that. And okay, I can use this. For likes, comments, and auth. Of course, I should import them here. Post, comment, like, and authentication. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Like that. Okay. Right now, we can reach our endpoints and we can make our API requests. Okay, let's try to log in, register and log out. I'm gonna come here and write my endpoints. First one will be login and we are gonna call login function, register and log out. Of course, we don't have those functions yet, but we are gonna create Let's create them here. I will say export const login function request response uh, for others and log out. Okay, it's ready. Firstly, actually, let's take this here that because we are gonna register first. I'm gonna separate them and let's see what we are gonna have. Firstly, when we register, we are going to check if we have the same user in our DB or not. If we already have, we are going to send an error. If we don't have, we are going to create a new user. So let's say check user if exists. If not, we are going to create a new user. And when we are creating this new user, we are going to hash its password. That because, as I said, when we send any password in plain text, we are going to hash this and it's going to be any random hashed code like that. And we are going to store only this part, not this plain text. Okay, let's do that. But before we didn't connect to our MySQL DB, let's create here connect.js. I'm going to import MySQL. And if you remember, I will say const db and I'm going to create a connection. And we are going to have some configurations here. First one will be host and we are using our local machine. So I will say localhost and I'm going to write here my username root. My MySQL password is going to be llama dev123. Of course, you are going to change this part. And by the way, if you don't have any password, just leave it empty. I've explained this in the MySQL video. And database name will be social. Remember, this is our database name. Okay, that's all. So using this connection method, we can make our operations. Let's come here and let's write our first query here. I will say const query. I will say select from users, users table, and I'm going to write here my condition if username equals question mark. We are using question mark here instead of writing request body and username. That because it provides us extra security. I recommend you to use question mark for your values like that. It's going to be much more secure. And after that, let's call our DB. As you can see from connect, 
app.js of course and i will say db.query i'm gonna pass here my query and i'm gonna write my values as you can see we have only one value here and it's gonna be request buddy and username username email password and name and we are going to take all these inputs inside request and buddy to do that we are going to need one more thing here let's write here our middlewares and first middleware will be express and json if you don't do that you will not be able to send any json object like this by the way let's make this lowercase it just annoys me <laughs> okay so we are ready why it's so crowded here i'm gonna close everything and open up again okay and after that after this operation it's going to return us either an error or data and we are going to check if there is any error we are going to return response status let's say 500 it's a server error and we are going to send this error you can write here json or send doesn't matter and as i said we are going to check if it exists or not if data.length return another error it means we already have this user so we shouldn't create new one i will say response status for all nine user already exists and if we don't have any user like that we can create new user let's hash our password to do that we are going to be using bcrypt.js cd api yarn at bcrypt.js let's import this here and i'm going to hash my password i will say const firstly we are going to create a salt bcrypt.js and we are going to generate a salt and after that we are going to hash our password let's say hashed password bcrypt hash and we are going to hash this password which is request body and password and using this salt this is how we are hashing our password using bcrypt.js don't worry about this line it's basically the method of hashing our password we have to generate this salt and pass it here and it's going to return us the encrypted password when we store this in our users table you are going to understand better i'm going to open users as you can see it's empty for now so let's add our user inside our db by the way it's going to be here i will say const another query i will say insert into our users table i'm gonna write here what we are gonna add we are gonna add our username email password name and other things will be now for now let's say username email password and name and i should write here our values and it's gonna be question mark as i said we are not writing directly we are gonna write it here i'll say db.query i'm gonna pass this query and our values will be here but be careful it should be in this order first one will be username request buddy.username email it's gonna be password but remember we are not gonna use request buddy and password we are gonna be using our hashed password and finally user and name actually instead of writing them like that i can create here an array let's say const values and it's gonna be this array and we can use it here directly and after that error or data if there is an error i will do the same thing here if there is no error we are gonna return response status 200 which means successful and we are going to return let's say user has been created i'm going to shrink here and let's try 
to do that you can use postman or insomnia or any other api request software or vs code extension but i prefer using insomnia let's create i will say request collection it's going to be social app i'm going to create new request i'm going to write here our application url which is localhost port number api and remember our endpoint and finally register as you can see we have a body and we are going to send a json file and inside let's say username test email password like that and finally our name let's say john Doe. I'm gonna send oops I said get method of course it's gonna be post that because I forgot here slashes let's see again okay there's a syntax error let's check select from users of course what we are selecting I didn't write we are selecting everything and uh, user has been created let's check here I'm gonna refresh and as you can see test our gmail there is a long hashed password here and John Doe perfect if I try to send again as you can see user already exists it works okay we can create our users but how we are gonna have login again we are gonna check our user but this time if we don't have any user we are gonna send error if we have an user we are gonna check if we have the correct password or not let's say select everything from users and our condition here username question mark let's call our db and query we are gonna pass our query here and we are gonna send our username which is request body and username if you want to you can log in with email also but i prefer using username and after that error data i'm gonna send my error if there is no error i'm gonna check my data length and if it's zero it means we don't have any user like that i'm gonna return response status will be not found 404 and we are gonna send user not found and if there is no error we can finally check our password i will say const check password and we are gonna be using bcrypt compare method and we are gonna send our body request and password and the user password in our db and we are gonna compare them if they are equal it means it's a successful login let's say request body password and our user remember it returns us a data but since we said select all from users it's gonna return us an array and in this array it's gonna be only one user so we are going to select this like that the first user and its password and let's write here our condition if check password is not correct we are going to return another error response status 400 which means wrong inputs and i'm going to say wrong password or username and finally we can return this user information but before I want to send a JWT token and it's gonna make our application much more secure that because for example when we try to delete this post firstly we are gonna check if this post belongs us or not to provide this security we are gonna be using JWT and cookies so I'm gonna open my terminal and I'm gonna add here two more libraries first one will be JSON web token second one will be cookie parser actually one more thing and it's gonna be course and it's gonna provide another security that because nobody should reach our api we are gonna allow 
only this URL, localhost 3000. And if any other URL try to reach our API, it's going to get an error. That's why we are using course. So I'm going to import them. I'm going to come here and use my middlewares. I will say course. It will stay like that for now. After that, we are going to add our localhost 3000. And finally, cookie parser. I will say course. And cookie parser. Okay. Of course, it's a function. So let's come here and create our JWT. Let's import this first. JWT from JSON Web Token. And I'm going to create my token here. It's going to be JWT sign. And we are going to send our user ID here. That because, as I said, to delete this post, we are going to check our user ID. If our user ID equals this post user ID, it means we are the owner and we can delete this post. So let's send our ID here. Remember, this is our user and we are going to send its ID. And we are going to write here any secret key. Of course, you can create here EMV file and hide this key there. But I'm just going to write it directly. Secret key. And that's all. Finally, we can send our user information and this JWT. I will say response. I will say cookie. And cookie name will be access token. And we are going to send our token here. And I'm going to write HTTP only. It means we are going to send and take our cookie through websites. In this case, a random script cannot use our cookie. Uh, finally, I will say status 200 JSON our user. But if I do that, it's going to return this password also. We don't want to do that, even if it's hashed. I just want to return all information but this password. Let's destructure our user here. I will say const take the password and other properties. It's going to be data and first item. It's going to separate its properties, password and others. If I use these others, it's not going to send this password here. Let's see. I'm going to say others. And that's all I think. I hope everything is okay. Let's try. Actually, let's write here another request. I will duplicate. Its name will be login. And this name will be register. Okay. This time it's going to be login endpoint. And we are going to send username and password. Let's send. Oops. I will delete this comma here. And as you can see, it returns all this information. And if I check the cookie, you are going to see that we have an access token. If I send different password, as you can see, bad request, let's see, wrong password or username. If I make this correct and change this username, as you can see, user not found. Perfect. So using this cookie, Everything is much more easier. That because this hash token includes our user ID. We are going to decrypt this hash token and we will be able to reach our user ID. And using that ID, we can do whatever you want. We can delete our posts. We can like posts using this ID. We can follow users. We can get timeline posts. In this case, we don't have to send our user ID inside body. This cookie will do everything for us. We are going to understand better soon. Let's write here our logout method also. Basically, we are going to delete our cookie. I will say clear cookie. And my cookie name here. Remember, what was name? Access token. And I'm going to write some configuration here for security. I will say secure. It's going to be true. And I have to write here same site known. That because our API port number is this number and our React application will be 3000. Basically, they are not the same. 
In this case, it's gonna automatically block our cookie requests. But if I write here same site num, we will be able to clear our cookie. And after that, I will say status 200 and we can send any message here. User has been logged out. Let's see. I'm gonna duplicate this. It's gonna be logout. If I say logout, of course, we don't need any JSON here. That's because we already have our cookie. I'm gonna send and user has been logged out. And as you can see, it's empty right now. Okay, so we can use this software, but how we are gonna register and log in using our React application? Let's open up our sidebar and close this API and open up client. To make API requests, we are gonna need Axios. I will say cd client site and I'm gonna say yarn add Axios. So using this Axios library, we are gonna make our API requests. Let's close here and this one and I'm gonna open my register page. Firstly, we are gonna need those inputs. Let's do that. I'm gonna open register page. As you can see, our inputs are here. And right now, let's create a use state. I will say const inputs set inputs use state hook. We will have username at the beginning, it's empty, and others. password and finally name. If you didn't watch my use state video, I highly recommend you to watch it because it includes everything you need to know about use state and it's a really short video. If you don't know how to set multiple inputs here, that video will help you. It's gonna be in the cart of course. Basically I'm gonna give them a name, username, make sure that those names are exactly the same names and on change method and let's say handle change i'm gonna copy here paste for others it's gonna be email password and name let's create this function here i'm gonna close this sidebar const handle change and we are gonna set our inputs. I will say previous inputs and it's gonna return us previous inputs but this time we are gonna change the input we are currently changing. For example if I write here something all items will be the same here and we are gonna change only this username. To do that of course we are gonna be using this name since they are exactly the same names with those properties, it's gonna update them automatically. So I will say event target and their names is gonna equal event target and their values. Let's see inputs. As you can see, it works. Perfect. Let me make this bigger. Okay. So we have our inputs here, right now we can send them using our register function. I'm gonna come here for this register button, I will say on click event, and it's gonna be handle click. So when I click on this button, we are gonna make a register request, I will say const handle click. I will quickly write here prevent default, that because I don't wanna refresh my page. When I click this button. So let's make our request using Axios. But there is something important here. So I will say try. Of course it's gonna be an async function. Don't forget that, that because we are making API request. And I will say await Axios post method. And I'm gonna write here my URL. And we are gonna send our inputs. And if everything is okay, we are gonna go to login page. If there is something wrong, we are gonna catch it. 
and we are going to set our error. Of course, we don't have. Let's create another use state, and it's going to be error, set error. At the beginning, it's going to be false. And if there is an error, we are going to set it to true. And we can show this error somewhere here. Before this button, I will say if there is an error, right here, our error message. Actually, we should check this first. Let's write here console log. And after, we are going to decide which message we are going to write. Of course, I should import this Axios. from Axios and let's see let's try I will say test to gmail.com and name will be test to I will register and as you can see our item is here if I try to register again, it returns this error. Of course, we said true and false, but actually it's going to be null. And when there is an error, we are going to write it here. Let's try again. As you can see, inside our error, there is a response. And inside this response, data says user already exists. So we can use it. Error, response, and data. So we can write it here. Let's try again, same username, I will register, user already exists, and this is our error. So we can register, but how we are going to log in? I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. But there is something important, if you remember the previous video, we have created here authentication context. That because we are going to use this user after this login process in our entire application here as you can see in which our name here we are going to use here and when we try to write any comment we are going to need it here basically after the login process we are going to store our user in authentication context api this is why the previous video is so important that because i'm not going to explain again and if you remember we have written here a fake data of course, this time we are going to be using Axios and updating our current user. Let's do that. It's going to be async, by the way. And I will say const response axios post. I'm going to paste here my endpoint. And we are going to send our inputs. Of course, we are going to take those inputs from this login page. So let's take this here and pass it here. Um, I'm going to write with credentials. It's important because we are working with cookies. If you don't write this, you may encounter any problems. Uh, finally, after that, I'm going to set my user. I will say set current user is going to be response.data. Remember, our backend server sends us our user information and also this cookie. Let's take our inputs, by the way. Let's copy this actually, our inputs and handle change. I'm going to import use state. We are going to have username and password. I'm going to save here, by the way, and we are going to call this login function. But this time it's going to be async. We are making request. And I can use here try catch method. We are going to await this function. Of course, we are going to send our inputs. And if there is something wrong, we are going to set our error. Remember, error, response, and data. By the way, let's use this handle change method and handle login method here. Okay, we already have this, but we don't have our input names and our function on change method and it's going to be handle change let's copy this and paste okay and if there's an error show it here let's see i'm going to refresh 
I will say test2 and password. I will log in. It refresh the page that because I forgot here writing prevent default. I will write it again and log in. And as you can see, we are blocked by our API. And it says you should give an access for your client site. Let's do that. It's happening that because we are using with credentials here, let's open up our index.js and here I'm going to say app.use. So whenever we make any request, we are going to give an access response header access control allow credentials and it's going to be true. In this case, we will be able to send our cookies and after that, I'm going to say next and we are going to continue doing our operations. And also, I'm going to write here my client URL. I will say origin and localhost 3000, which is our React application. Let's try. I'm going to refresh. Test 2. I will log in. Okay, it's still in promise. Okay, that because I forgot here. Wait. Let's see. I hope everything is okay. Test 2. I will log in. As you can see, no error. If I check my application here, as you can see, we have our user information, everything we need. And if I check cookies here, as you can see, our access token. This is what we want. And after this login process, I want to go to the home page. To do that, we are going to be using use navigate hook. I will say const navigate use navigate. As you can see, it comes from React Router DOM. And using this navigate, we are going to go to home page. Let's try. Test 2. And as you can see, we are here. And as you realize, we have here our username, I mean user.name, and also our image. Of course, we don't have any image yet. That's because, let's check. As you can see, it's null. But we are going to upload later. Actually, let's copy this image address and paste for this profile page. Uh, for the cover, I'm going to copy this. We are going to upload our own images, but for now, it can stay. Let's say it's the USA and website will be llama.dev. I'm going to update my user. I think our images are too big. Let's come here. And I'm going to increase this character. It's going to be 300, for example, because sometimes images URLs can be really long. I'm going to update. And after that, I'm going to apply again. And as you can see, it's successful right now. And I'm going to log in again. And as you can see, it's here. Okay, perfect. So what I'm gonna do is to fetch our timeline posts. If you remember, let's close everything here and open up our posts. As you remember, we are using this dummy array, but this time I'm gonna delete here and we are gonna fetch our own posts. To do that, we can use use effect and we can use Redux. When we add any new post here, we can see underneath immediately. But in this tutorial, I want to show you something different. Let's not repeat ourselves and use React Query. It's one of my favorite React library that you can fetch your data, you can cache the data. Basically, it's much more effective than using use state and use effect. You are gonna see how efficient it is. I'm gonna open up here. React query page. I'll say get started. You can read here why you should use React query, what features it includes. This is how we are going to use it. To do that, I'm going to copy this library 
And in the client side, I will say yarn add react query. And as you can see here, it's really similar to use state and use effect combination. When we fetch any data, it's going to return us is loading error and data. You don't have to do anything more. Just give here a query name. For example, when we fetch our posts, I'm going to write here posts. Using Axios, we are going to make API request. And using this data, we are going to call our post component as we did here. But there is something important here, and this is query client. Basically, we are going to have a provider here, and we are going to wrap our entire application with this provider. That because, let me explain in our example, when we send any post here, we are going to make a post request, but in this case, we are not going to see our new post here, but if we wrap our application with this client provider, we will be able to reach any React query here using this query name. As I said, when we fetch our data, it's going to be posts, for example. But even if we are in the another component, in this case, we are going to be in the share component. When we add this post, we will be able to refetch those posts. You are going to understand everything better right now. I'm going to copy here and open up app.js. I'm not going to index.js that because we are going to use them only for this layout. Let's import them. We are going to need this client and provider. So I'm going to delay it here. Let's wrap our app. Like that. And I'm going to create this query client somewhere here. And as you can see, we are going to pass it like that. And that's all. We can trigger any fetching function in any component. We are going to do that and you are going to see better. But before, let's fetch our posts. I'm going to come here. And I'm going to be using this use query method. Let's import. We are not going to need them. And we are going to use it like that. Of course, we are going to be using Axios, so I will delete this, and my query name will be posts. So let's write here Axios, but to not repeat ourselves, I want to create here one more file, and it's going to be our Axios function, which includes our base URL. What I mean by that? I will say axios.js, I'm going to call Axios, import. Axios from Axios. And after that, export const, let's say make request. And I'm going to call Axios and I will say create. Basically, we can create any base URL here. Let's say base URL is going to be our backend URL. HTTP, localhost, port number, and API. And also, I'm going to write here with credentials and it's going to be true. That because I want to send our access token to our backend server. So I'm going to save and we can use this function here. I'll say make request and it's going to be a get method. We already have a base URL. I'm just going to write here posts. Then it's going to return us a response. Of course, you can use async await, but also you can use this promise version. It's going to return response.data. Let's import this request. It's going to be Axios and make request. In this case, these posts will be this data. Of course, it's not going to work that because we don't have any endpoint yet. Let's create. I'm going to come here, routes, posts. As you can see, it's empty. I will say the main URL and when we make a request on this URL, we are going to call get posts. Let's create this function in our controller here. I will say export const get posts. We are going to take request response 
and let's see in our application of course we cannot see anything here but in our user timeline we are gonna see only our friends posts and our own posts it's gonna be a little bit confusing if you are a beginner of mysql but don't worry i'm gonna explain and you are gonna understand firstly i'm gonna say const and let's get started firstly i will say select all from posts if you do that it's gonna fetch all posts but also let's actually take everything back so i can show you better okay as you can see we are gonna need this post detail its description and this image but also we are gonna need this user to do that we should combine to mysql table and i'm gonna show these posts as p it's the shortcut of this posts table and i'm gonna join here our users and let's say as you right now we are fetching posts as well as users but we should write here a condition so we should select only the owner of this post to do that i will say on and user.id is going to be equal post.userid in this case we are going to fetch only this user right now instead of everything i can write here whatever i need firstly we are going to need its id description this image created at everything so i'm going to say p dot everything but i don't need everything for this user we are going to need only its image name and its id because when we click here we are going to use this id so i will say u dot id as user id so it's going to return us our user id i will say name and also profile picture i didn't say here directly id that because it's going to be a conflict our post has this id also to prevent this conflict i just used s of course we are going to use something else here but let's see what it's going to return i will say db let's import this connect.js i will say query i'm going to send my query here for now we are not going to send any value so i can directly write error and data if there is an error we are going to send it directly as we always do i just copy and paste and if there is no error response status 200 and it's going to return this data okay let's come here and take everything back i'm gonna close here and let's see what we have i will say console log data okay it's empty that because we don't have any post yet let's create one id1 description test uh, user id will be one it's gonna be our post i'm gonna apply and as you can see it's here i'm gonna create one more copy and paste here it's gonna be id2 test2 and right now we have two items perfect and let's see what it says as you can see we have our description post id its image but also we have username its profile picture and user id so we can use them here i'm going to open up and as you can see they are here and i can use this if it's loading let's write here loading if it's not oops it's gonna be question mark if it's not return this data and i can write another condition here and we can check our error if there is an error let's check okay it's error like that right here something went wrong if it's not return this 
I will refresh. And as you can see, if I make my application slower and refresh, as you can see, loading first and after our posts. It's that easy, guys. I will say normal speed and that's all. But we didn't filter our posts yet. What I mean by that? Let's come here and register another user. Test2. Let's say Jando. I will send. Already exists. Of course, this is our user. I forgot that. I'm going to create another one. Let's say Jando. I will send. Okay, it's created. So let's create other posts for other users. By the way, I said it's my user, but I forgot we logged in as a test too. It's test one, John Doe. So this second one will be our post. And this one will be user three. I will apply. Let's fetch them. And let's say we are following only John, not Jane. In this case, we are going to see only this post and our post. Let's follow John first. Let's open up relationships. Follower user will be our user, which is ID 2. And followed user will be John, which is 1. I will apply. Right now, I want to fetch only John's posts and my posts. Let's come here and change our query. I have to write here one more join and it's gonna be relationships table. Let's say sr and I'm gonna write on and I will say p dot user id equals r dot followed user id and also r dot follower id and it's gonna be our user ID. So I'm gonna say question mark, oops, follower user ID. And we are gonna send here our user ID. But how we are gonna reach our user ID? As I said, we are using cookies. And in that cookie, we have our JSON web token. And inside that token, we have our user ID. Before all of this, I'm just gonna say const token. We are gonna check request cookies and access token and if there is no token we are going to send an error that because if we are not logged in we won't be able to reach those posts i will say if there is no token return response status 401 and not logged in and if you have a token we should validate this token that because it expires so i'm gonna say jwt verify and i'm gonna send here my token and remember we are using a secret key our controller okay secret key and it can be an error or it can return us a data let's actually write here user info it's going to be better to understand and i will say if there's an error it means we have a token but it's not valid so i'm going to return response 403 and json will be token is not valid and if everything is okay it's going to return this user info and remember we sent here our id basically this object is this user info and if I say user info.id, we will be able to reach this user ID. So we can use it here. So let's take them inside this verification function. Of course, there's a comma here. And I will say user info.id. Let's see right now. And as you can see, there is only John's post here. That because we said follower user ID should be our ID, in this case, it's going to fetch all relationships belong to us and also p user id will be our followed user id in this case it's only john and it selects only john's posts 
but I want to see my posts here also. What can I do? I can delete here. It can be only followed user. And I can write here where r dot follower user our user ID or p dot user ID is gonna be our user ID. In this case, we are gonna need one more user ID like that. I will refresh. Okay, it's not here. That because I said join. In this case, it's gonna try to find a common record. But if I write here left join, as you can see, John's post and our post. Perfect. Let's test. We are gonna follow Jane Doe also. I'm gonna apply. In this case, Jane Doe is here. If I delete this first relationship, delete role, I will apply. In this case, it's gonna be only our post and Jane's post. One more thing we can do. We can order those posts. I will come here and I'm gonna say order by post and it's created at date. But I want to see the closest date like that. As you can see, it's exactly the same that because we don't have any date yet. Let's check. As you can see, it's null. But when we add our own post here, we are gonna add this date and it's gonna order those posts. Let's do that actually. And you are gonna see how to refetch those data. To do that, I'm gonna go to my add point and I will say post methods and add post. Right now, instead of this workbench, we are gonna use our application. Let's open up post controller. I'm gonna copy here and paste. It's gonna be add posts. Actually, add post. Let's see. Okay, it's gonna be singular. To add any post, we should be logged in first. And after that, I'm gonna write here my query. I will say insert into posts table. And I'm gonna write here what I want to add. It's gonna be description, image, created at, and finally user ID. And of course we are gonna need our values and it's gonna be question mark. Let's write our values here. Array, first one will be request, body and description. We can add an image. We are gonna have created at date. To do that we are gonna be using moment library let's open up api here and i will say yarn add moment it's a great library that you can play around dates and also we can show our dates like that one minute ago one month ago so we are gonna need it here also yarn add and moment okay let's take this here and using this moment I'm gonna take the current moment, current date, and I'm gonna turn this into MySQL date format, which is year, month, and day. Also, we should write it here, hour, minutes, and seconds. Let's import moment. Okay. Uh, finally, we are gonna need this user ID, and remember how we are taking this using this user info. There is a comma here. Okay. After that, we can send those values. If there is an error, it's going to send us. If everything is okay, I'm going to write here, post has been created. Let's test it here first. I will say add post. It's going to be posts. And here, let's say description from insomnia our software name and I'm not gonna add anything else I'm gonna send I forgot again this comma I will send and we are not logged in of course I'm gonna log in as test 3 okay right now I can add okay something is wrong here 
it adds those slashes to parentheses. I'm going to use backtick. And here is going to be caught. And I'm going to wrap this. Let's end again. Okay, post has been created. Let's check. Okay, it's here. And user ID is Jane Doe. So it works. We can try this here. I'm going to open up share component. And here we have a file. We are going to upload our image. And also we have this text. Let's write here const file set file use state hook. At the beginning it's going to be null. And one more. And it's going to be our description empty string and when we update this input we are going to update our description and it's going to be event target and value i'm going to copy this and paste for this file input we are going to set our file and it's going to be files and a single file we are going to add only one image and finally, when we click on this share button, handle click. I'm going to create this const handle click. I will say prevent default. And we are going to send our file and description using React Query. But to test it, we are not going to send our file first. We are going to upload our image later. Let's see how to use React Query. To do that, we are going to be using React Query mutations. As you can see, using this use mutation function, we are going to make our post request. And if it's successful, we are going to say refetch our posts in the home page. So after adding a new post, it's going to immediately refresh our fetch method. And we are going to see our post here. And we are doing this using query client. Because remember, in our app.js, we wrapped our application with this provider. And thanks to this provider, we can reach this query client in any component. And we can refetch any data here. In this case, it's going to be posts. Let's copy here. And I'm going to paste. We are not going to need to use query. We have already created client and provider. Okay. Let's create our mutation first. Let's copy this because we are going to refresh our posts. Like that. Oops. It's going to be use client, of course. That because we created our client in the app.js. And after that, we are going to create our mutation. If it's new for you, don't worry. Don't be confused. You are going to understand. I'm going to copy this mutation like that. And using this mutation, we are going to make our API request here. Let's create here our fetching function. We are going to get a new post. In this case, it's going to be our file and description. And we are going to make a request. And I will say return make request. Remember, it's our Axios and post request. Our endpoint will be posts and we are going to send our description and image here. And if it's successful, we are going to refetch. In this case, it's going to be posts because remember our query name is posts. So we can refetch. So let's use this mutation here. I will say mutation dot mutate function and I'm going to pass here this new post. In this case, it's going to be our description and image. Of course, we don't have any image. Let's test this with only description. I will save a from React. I'm going to share. OK, it's not here. OK, we added, but we cannot refresh our posts. Oh, it's going to be like that. Let's see again. Test from React. I will share and as you can see it's immediately here. This is how we are fetching data 
and adding data using React query. Of course, we can do the same thing for delete and put methods. For example, in our profile page, when we update our user, we are going to use exactly the same method, but this time it's going to be put. And when we update our user, we are going to fetch user information immediately, and we are going to see that our user is updated. Of course, there is advanced usage of React Query, but I don't want to deep dive into its usage. Probably it will take hours, but for now, it's enough to know the basic way of fetching data and adding new data. And in the future, if you want to, I can create a React Query video or Redux Toolkit Query video. Just let me know in the comments. Okay, to upload our file, we can use any cloud service, but as I see in the comments, most people just want to upload their files into their servers. To do that, we are going to be using Malter. If you remember the block application, we are going to use exactly the same method. Let's search for Malter in npm. I'm going to add it first. Let's open up terminal. In API, I will say yarn add Malter. And after that, we are going to import Malter and we are going to take any destination here. We can create any folder and upload our files inside that folder. And finally, using this upload function, we are going to create an endpoint and upload our files. But there is something strange here that because when you use this destination, it's not adding image extensions. For example, if you are uploading 1.png, it's not adding png. To prevent this issue, we are going to be using Malter Disk Storage. In this case, we can give any specific destination, but also we can change our file name. We are going to create here a unique name and we are going to upload this file into this destination. So let's copy this. I'm going to open my API and I'm going to paste it here. Of course, you can create any router, but I'm just too lazy to do all of this thing. And we have only one endpoint, so we can write it here, doesn't matter. So let's create here a destination. I want to add my folder into client folder and public. And we are going to create here upload folder. Let's do that inside client, public, and upload. Okay. And after that, we are going to create here a unique name. Actually, let's delete this. They created a really complex image name, but we don't need that. I will delete here. Basically, you can use your file and its original name. But if you do that, when you try to upload another file with the same name, it's going to be a conflict. To prevent this, let's transform this name into a unique name. To do that, I'm going to use date.now. It's going to create a unique date and plus this file name. And Malter will be using this storage. Let's import, by the way. And finally, let's write our endpoint. I will say post. It's going to be post method. API and upload. We are going to be using this upload method. And we are going to upload only single file. And we are going to take request, response. If everything is OK status will be 200 and we are going to send our file dot file name that because we are going to store this file name into our db by the way let's write here our file we are going to take this from user request dot file okay let's try i hope everything is okay i'm going to open share and create here an upload function const upload async function and try catch just console log this error of course you can write here error use state and after that i will say const form data we have to create here form data that because we cannot send this file directly to our api so it's going to be form data and we are going to pass our file into this data let's say form data dot append is going to be file and we are going to send our file here and finally we are going to make our request let's say const response 
I will say make request dot post our endpoint which is upload and finally we are going to send this form data and if everything is okay it's going to return us our URL and we are going to return this URL response dot data okay let's use this function here firstly I'm going to create an image URL here it's going to be empty and I will say if there is a file just update this image URL and it's going to be our upload function of course in this case it's going to be async and right now I can send this image URL here in our DB remember its name is image so I will say image is going to be this image URL so if we don't have any file it's going to be just empty string if we have we are going to upload it and return its URL and finally we are going to send to our mutation let's see description with image I'm going to come here and choose an image let's choose this one I will share okay we cannot see this here we are going to handle it but let's check here I'm going to refresh and as you can see this image is here and if I check my upload folder we are going to see that our image is here but how we are going to show it let's open up post not posts post this one and as you remember we are using post and image directly but we are storing only image name in this case we should add here our destination so let's say upload folder plus this name of course one more slash here and perfect it's here one more thing we can do when we add any image we can show it somewhere here so let's open up share and here as you can see in the top section we have user profile picture and input and I want to add here something more so we are gonna see our image here to do that let's wrap this image and input with a container I will say left I will wrap this and right and it's gonna include our image I will say if there is a file show this image I will give class name it's gonna be just file of course alt and source will be URL dot create object URL and I'm gonna pass here my file it's gonna be create object URL so basically it's gonna create a fake URL that we can show our image here actually we are not uploading it anywhere it's in our local machine but we are gonna create a URL to show it here let's choose for example this one I didn't save I will and as you can see it's here it's circle that because we have a style for this image but we are gonna change and by the way as you can see it's not centered anymore that because we wrap this with another container let's open up our CSS file and inside top I will say left and it's gonna wrap this image and input and right and it's gonna be our file image basically I can make here flexbox and I can separate this left and right side there was gap here I can delete and say justify content and space between of course this image is too big let's say 100 pixels and object fit and we are not gonna have any border radius okay like that I can center those items display flex align item center but we cannot see our name here if you remember the input width is 60% but we cannot see it basically we can give here and flex it's gonna be three times bigger than this right side I can say flex and for this right side let's say display flex justify content flex and like that perfect 
I'm going to refresh. As you can see, there is nothing. I'm going to choose any image here, and it's here. Let's see. I will share, and it's here. Perfect. By the way, after adding new post, I can delete this image and description. I will say set description is going to be empty again, and our file. But it's still here. That because I should write here a value and it's gonna be our description. In this case, it's gonna delete. Okay, perfect. And what about this date? Where is our post here? And I'm gonna come here and say moment post dot created at and from now. Let's import. As you can see, a minute ago, two minutes, ten, and others. It's an invalid date that because they are null, as you can see. But anyway, it works. So I can do exactly the same thing for these comments. When I click, we are gonna fetch our post comments, and also we are gonna add this like functionality. Let's do that. So let's close everything here and open up comments okay i'm gonna delete this dummy data and we are gonna fetch all comments to do that we are gonna need our post id because we will fetch our comments according to this post id so let's use react query and fetch our data to do that i will just copy and paste my react query part here like that of course, let's import them. And its name will be comments. And when we make this request, we are gonna call comments endpoint. And as a parameter or as a query, we should pass our post ID. Let's say query post ID is gonna equal our post ID. Okay, after that, we will use this data. We are gonna use moment here comment dot created at from now okay and we can use here is loading I'll say if it's loading right here loading if it's not show me my data okay let's create our endpoint I will come here comments and it's going to be main URL, and we are going to call get comments. In my controller, I will say export const get comments request response. Let's actually copy from here. Actually, I can delete here. We are not going to need our user ID. We will just pass here our post ID. And remember, it's request, query, and post ID. Because we are sending inside this endpoint, we are going to take this part, which is our post ID. And I can delete here. OK. We are going to do exactly the same thing. We will fetch our comment details from comments as C let me close this sidebar and we are going to join user to get its user ID name and profile picture but we are not going to need this relationship we are going to need our post ID so I will say C dot post ID equals question mark let's take this here okay so we are going to fetch all comments belongs this post ID. By the way, it's a dot and c dot created at. Let's see. I will say console log data. Okay, it's loading, but there is something wrong. Oh, it says. Post 
post ID equals undefined. That because we didn't pass our post ID as a prop. Let's open up post. Not posts, post. And we have our comments here, but we didn't pass our post ID. Let's do that. Post ID equals post dot ID. Okay, still error. Let's check. Our error is here. Response data. And it says db is not defined, of course. I didn't import this. Connect.js And let's check our query. See our user as user ID. Okay, by the way, there is a mistake here. It's going to be comments. And I hope this time it works. Let's refresh. I will click here and as you can see it works and it's empty. So how we are going to add here new comment. It's really easy. Remember our share component. I'm going to open share. But before let's add our endpoint and controller. I will say post add comment. Let's open up Post.js and I'm gonna copy here and paste. It's gonna be add comment. We are gonna check our user ID. If everything is okay, insert into comments. We are gonna add description. We will not have any image created at user ID and we are gonna have post ID. Description date, user ID, and request, body, and post ID. Of course, if you want to, you can take as a parameter or query as you wish. And after that, we will say comment has been created. Let's come here. We are going to be using mutation. Of course, we are going to need query client. That because when we add a new comment, we are going to refetch our data. So I'm going to copy here, comments, and I will paste. Let's import this. Actually, we already have. I can delete this one. Okay. It's going to be mutation. We are going to take new comment from user, and our endpoint will be comment and after this process we are gonna refresh our comments query we don't have any image I can delete here here we are gonna send our description and post ID and it's gonna be this post ID so I can delete here let's create our description use state description set description new state hook and when we change this input I'm gonna update my state on change event target and value and I will say value description so after that we can set to empty string back and we are gonna use this handle click here on click method and that's all Let's try, by the way, comments, and let's check here also if everything is okay. I don't want to see any error there. Did we import this JWT? Okay, we didn't. I will say JSON Web Token. And also, I'm going to add moment. Because we are using moment here and description date user info post info i will refresh and let's say 
first test. I'm going to send, and as you can see, it's here. Created at our name, but where is our profile picture? Okay, it's going to be profile pick like that. And perfect. As you can see, it's immediately here. I can close here. And what about this like functionality? Let's open up post. As you remember, we have two icons here. If it's liked, our icon will be filled with a color. Let's see. As you can see, it's a temporary logic here. We are going to delete and apply our functionality. But for now, as you can see, it's black right now. Let's change this color, actually. I will say style. Color will be red. OK, perfect. So what I'm going to do here? Basically, I'm going to create a like endpoint and we are going to fetch all likes of any post using its post ID. Let's open up like route here and I will say main URL and I will say get likes. Let's open up controller. Export const get likes request response. Of course, I'm going to add here db and jwt, otherwise I will forget probably. Let's come here, copy this. Actually, we don't need here our token. We are not going to use our ID. Select user ID from likes where post ID equals question mark. And I'm going to delete here. And I'm going to pass my post ID. Let's take as a query, I will say post ID, and it's going to return our data. I'm going to come here and I will try to fetch my data. We can delete here. And let's create our query. I'm going to copy here and paste. And we are going to make a request here like that our endpoint will be likes and of course we are going to pass here our post id we are using query so i'm going to write question mark post id equals our post dot id it's going to be likes and i'm going to pass this post id here let's see i will see console log data of course, I'm going to comment this out that because we don't have any functionality yet. I'm going to open my console. OK, there's an error. OK, I said form. Of course, it's going to be from. And right now, as you can see, they are empty because we don't have any like. So I can use this array length for this number. Let's use this data. And data dot length likes. As you can see, zero. Let's like any post here. I'm going to open up posts. As you can see, this is the latest post and its ID is 12. We can like it. I'm going to come here, our user ID and post ID. I will apply. And as you can see, the like is one. So what I'm going to do? We have this data and it includes user IDs. So I can write here a condition. I will say if data includes our user ID, of course, we are going to be using our current user. Let's say const current user use context and auth context. Let's choose this uh, current user dot ID. But it's still empty. Let's check our data here. 
And as you can see, it doesn't directly contains user IDs. Instead, it contains an object first and it says user ID equals to. So let's convert this. I want this array to contain only user IDs, nothing else. So I'm going to open my controller here and I will map through this data. I will take each like and I'm going to return like dot user ID. Let's see right now, as you can see, it's red and also it contains only numbers, not these objects. Okay, perfect. So how I can change this like? When I click, we should remove our like record here. And if I click for other posts, we are going to add this post ID and user ID here. Let's create two endpoints. I will say post and delete. I will say add like and delete like. Not likes, like. Okay, let's create them. I will copy this. It's going to be add like. We are going to need our user ID here. And here, delete like. Okay. After verifying our JSON web token, I'm going to write here my query. And it's going to be insert into likes. I'm going to write here what I'm going to add. It's going to be user ID and post ID. And values. It's going to be question mark. We are going to need our user ID and request body and post ID. And that's all. Let's say post has been liked. And to delete our like, I'm going to come here. I will say delete from likes. And my condition user ID will be question mark and post ID will be question mark. It's going to be our ID and post ID. And let's say like has been deleted or post has been disliked. It's not actually dislike, but anyway, it can stay. It's not a big deal. So let's try them. So I'm going to open post component here and I'm going to write here on click event. Let's say handle like. I will copy this and paste for this one. Let's create this function. I will delete here const handle like. And I'm going to use a mutation because when I like or dislike, I want to see the result immediately here. Remember, query client and mutation. Let's write them here. Use mutation. And we are going to make a request inside likes. And I'm going to pass my post ID, which comes from this post. But there is something important here that because we don't know if we have already liked this post or not, so we are going to need a condition here. Again, I'm going to use exactly the same thing. Data includes current user ID. So I'm going to come here and when I call my mutation here, let's say mutation dot mutate, and I'm going to pass here this value. It will be true or false. So I can take this value here, let's say liked, and I'm going to write my condition. If it's liked, we are going to add new like into our DB. If it's not, we are going to make another request. Let's say return, make request is going to be delete method. By the way, did I say delete? Okay, I said. And likes, and we are going to send our post ID like that. And after everything, it's going to refresh our likes query here, like that. And we are going to see this result. And as always, we can use this error 
or is loading or both of them let's come here i will say is loading loading if it's not show this data let's check again i will say if it's liked it means we are gonna delete our like by the way it's gonna be delete and we are gonna pass our post id of course we can pass this as a query let's say post id equals this id let's say plus and when it comes to post we can send our post id inside this object its request and body and inside this body we are sending this post let's check back here we are going to take our user id and post id and we are going to add these values here of course there will be no equal it's going to be like that and uh, for the delete method i'm going to delete this we are writing them separately so user id will be user info dot id and post id will be request params post id i hope everything is okay like that let's try i'm gonna like and as you can see we like this post and increase this number if i click again okay there is no error by the way i want to delete this data here okay something is wrong let's check and the like and same method here we are sending if it's liked or not if it's we are gonna delete likes post id i don't know let's check actually if it works or not I'm gonna open my terminal I will save and let's see I'm gonna click okay it works but why it's not deleting oh I'm sorry it's gonna be query and it's gone perfect I will refresh as you can see it's zero we like this I can take back and like awesome i hope you understood guys if you are a complete beginner it can be a little bit confusing for you all those different queries but if you create couple projects using mysql or any sql database you are gonna understand everything better and for this react query i believe that you understood how to fetch data and how to add delete or update data using mutations okay what else we will have we will have our profile page let's use react query and fetch our data i will come here and copy this and open up my profile page and paste here of course we are going to need our libraries here basically we are going to fetch this user information so it's going to be user and our endpoint will be users and find and we are going to pass here our user id let's delete here and how we are going to take our user id if you watched my previous videos you already know that basically we are going to take this number from our url to do that we are going to be using use location hook const user id use location hook and we are going to take its path name but if we do that it's going to return this all url but we are going to need only this number basically we are going to use javascript split method 
and using those slashes we are going to split our URL in this case this part will be our first element profile will be second element and this will be third element so it's going to return us an array to take this last part I'm going to say split and third element 0 1 and 2 okay right now we have our user id we can fetch this data let's see i will say console log data it says query key needs to be an array i'm sorry because in version 3 we are able to use it like that but after version 4 we are gonna add here this array So let's open up users. As you can see, we have find user ID parameter. And inside get user, it's empty. So let's fetch our data. Firstly, I'm going to take my user ID. I will say const user ID equals request params user ID. Const query is going to be select from user stable and my condition here user id will be question mark basically we are going to pass this user id let's write here db and json web token we are going to use them so i will say db.query and i'm going to pass here my query and after that my user id it will be error data if there's an error it's going to return us response status 500 and this error and if everything is okay remember our login controller i will just copy paste actually we are going to take our user information and send it like that we are not going to send this password i'm going to save and as you can see our user is here and all these information so let's use them here inside profile i can use this data Firstly, data.cover picture. I'm gonna copy this. Data.profile picture. If you want to, you can add those social media information. But I just show you this T and website. I think you can do the rest. It's our username. I mean user.name, not username. Users T. Oops not double and website okay perfect it's here so what i'm gonna do is to write here a condition that because this is our profile page and we are not allowed to follow ourselves so i will come here and say a condition of course to do that we are gonna need our current user i will say current user from use context and authentication context and i'm going to say if user id equals our current user id dot id we are going to return another button if it's not we are going to return this button and it's going to say update as you can see it's still followed that because this user id is a string because we are taking it like that let's see i will say type of user id by the way there is an error to prevent this i'm gonna use this loading i will just cover everything and i'm gonna say if it's loading right here loading if it's not return these elements of course we are going to need here react fragments like that okay and as you can see it's a string but our current user id it's a number so basically they are not equal to prevent this i will come here cover this and i'm gonna say parse integer so it's gonna be a number 
and they are going to be equal. Let's see right now, and as you can see, it's update. Perfect. Let's open up another user, for example, Jane Doe, and I'm going to write here the following functionality. Let's come here and say on click, it's going to be handle follow. const handle follow so let's open up our menu and i'm gonna add here relationship.js and relationships.js let's copy this likes rather it's gonna be similar we are gonna get relationships delete and add new relationship of course it's going to be relationship.js and i'm going to open like js copy everything and paste here it's going to be get relationships add and delete okay so i'm going to fetch follower user id from relationships where followed user ID equals question mark basically this is our followed user ID using this ID we are gonna find its followers we are gonna pass here followed ID actually a followed user ID and finally it's gonna return us our relationship remember it's going to return us an object and we are going to transform this object into user ids i will save and let's open up our profile again and fetch our data like that i'm going to delete them and i'm going to change this data name and it's going to be relationship data it's going to be relationship relationships and we are going to pass here our user id what was the name let's check follow to user id it's going to equal this user id okay so i can use this let's say console log okay it says not found that because in index.js we didn't import our new route let's import relationship routes and here okay it says null of course not user id follower user id And as you can see, this is our user ID because we are following this user. So I'm going to do exactly the same condition here. Let's get this relationship data. And I'm going to write here if it includes our user ID, current user dot ID. We are going to write here following. If it's not follow. As you can see, we are already following this user. But if I go to John's page, as you can see, it says follow. Okay. By the way, it's giving this error. To prevent this, we can use is loading because we don't have our data yet. But to use this, we have to change its name. Let's say relationship is loading. Let's come here and say loading if it's not show this. Okay, it works. So we are going to create here a mutation and if we are following this user, we are going to delete our follow. If we are not following, we are going to add new relationship. 
it's really similar to our like functionality, remember? So I'm gonna copy here and let's delete this handle follow also and right back and I'm gonna change here. Let's say following and relationship data. If it includes our user ID, it's gonna be true. In this case, we are gonna delete this relationship. Let's say relationship, and we are gonna pass here our user ID, and it's gonna be user ID. But if we are not following, it's gonna be post method, and we are gonna send here user ID, it's gonna equal user ID, so I can delete here. And we are gonna invalidate query, and it's gonna be this user. That's because we are gonna change that button, and that's all. Let's come here and change this add method, insert into relationships, follower user ID, and follow to user ID. First one will be our ID because we are the follower and we are following request body and user ID. Let's write here something following uh, follow or whatever you say. And in this case, delay from relationships where follower user ID will be. our user id and followed user id will be request query and user id i hope i didn't make any mistake i'm scared because i've been coding for hours and my brain just stopped <laughs> i'm making mistakes easily but we don't have that much i can hold on <laughs> so let's open our console i'm gonna click here it says not found because I said relationship is going to be relationships profile relationships okay it works but it's not refreshing our user oh I'm sorry it's not going to be user of course it's going to be this relationship we are not refetching our user we are refetching this relationship and that's all. Perfect. We are following. Let's open up relationship here. It's here. Let's unfollow. I will refresh. And it's gone. Perfect. And we need to fetch user posts here. It's the Jane's profile, but there are my posts here. To prevent this, I can add here a prop. And I'm gonna say user ID equals user ID. If in the post component, if we have a user ID here, we are gonna send it as a query. Let's say user ID equals our user ID. And in the backend server, let's open up post.js we are going to add here a condition. Let's take our user ID. Const user ID is going to be request query uh, user ID. And I'm going to change my query here. I will say if there's a user ID, it means we are in the profile page. So we are not going to select our timeline posts. We are going to select all posts belong to this user. So I will say select actually it's going to be the same thing but we are not going to have this relationship. I'm just going to say where p.userid is going to be question mark and here for this query I will say if there is a user ID use only user ID if it's not current user ID 
and we are going to write it twice. Actually, I can create here values. And write it like that. But be careful, we are not using like that. We are going to be using without this array. Okay, let's see. And as you can see, it's only Jane Doe. Let's check. John, perfect. And our page, which is test2. And awesome. And one more thing we are going to need, and it's going to be this update component. When I click here, I'm going to open a model here, and we will be able to update our user. I'm going to go to source, components, and create new folder. And it's going to be update. Let's say update.jsx. I'm going to import here its CSS file. And let's create CSS. I'm going to give a class name. Remember how we are handling these comments. When I click here, we are opening this comments section. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Let's open up profile page. Actually, let's close everything and open up from scratch. And somewhere here, I will say update. Let's import this. Okay, so I'm going to create here a use state, open update, set open update. And at the beginning it's going to be false, and if it's true, we are going to see this update model. Let's write here our condition, open update, and show this component. And to close this model, we are going to set our state inside this update model because I'm going to create a button and when I click on this button, we are going to close. We are going to understand better right now. Let's open up update. We already have class name here, so I'm going to go to scss. So I will say position absolute and I'm going to center this. Remember from the previous lesson how we are doing this. I will say 50%. Height will be 50%. I'm going to give a background color. Let's say white. Padding. And Z index will be bigger than everything. So we are going to see this update model over any component here. And I'm going to take this set method here as a prop. Let's create here a span. And when I click on this button, or you can say button, on click, and set update will be false. And in this button, I will say on click. And when I click on this button, we are going to open up. Let's see, I will click. As you can see, it's here. If I click, it's gone. It works like that. So let's add here our inputs. We are going to have cover picture, profile picture, our name, city, and this website. Let's say form. It's going to be file, second file, name, city, and website. If you want to, you can add password, username, email, or any other information as you wish. I'm just showing you how you can do this. Let's give name. On change, remember what we are doing here. I'll say handle change. 
and for others. XT and website. Let's create this function. But before, I'm going to create my use state. Actually, I will just paste. You know how to do that. We are going to have names, the website, and using those names, we are going to update this set text. So let's copy our function also. I'm passing here quickly that because we have just done this in the share component. And remember, we have an upload function. I'm going to open share here. I'm going to copy this. We are going to upload our cover and profile pictures. But this time we are going to pass here a file that because we are going to have two more files. Actually, let's add them also. Cover, set cover. At the beginning is going to be no. And one more and it's going to be profile. So basically this file will be this cover or profile. Let's import this. And uh, finally, we are going to have a button here. And let's say update. On click event. And it's going to be handle submit. And remember here, we have query client and we are sending a new post. But this time, we are going to update our user. But it's exactly the same thing. Let's import our React query here. And instead of new post, we are going to send our user information. Let's say user. And it's going to be users endpoint. And the method will be put. I'm not giving here any specific user ID that because we are going to use JWT. So we will be able to update only our profile page. If it's successful, we are going to refetch this user. Remember, we have a query here. We are going to refetch like that. And it was handle click or submit. Okay, submit. Let's change this. And when we click here, this time we are going to have two images. Let's say cover URL. At the beginning, I'm not going to leave this empty because remember, we already have a cover picture here. I'm not going to delete it. So I can take this cover picture and write it here. So I will say user.cover picture. How we are going to reach this user? Of course, from profile page. So not only this set open update, also we are going to pass this user. Actually it's data, remember, from this query, I will save and I can use this user here. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for profile picture. And let's delete here and I'm going to say cover URL. If there is a cover file, remember, we have a cover file and profile file. So if there is a cover, we are going to update it. So I will say wait, upload and we are going to pass this cover file. Let's write here profile. And basically, if we have file, we are going to update it. It's going to return new URL. If there is no, we are going to use the previous picture. We are not going to change it. And finally, mutate. We are going to pass here our names, the and website. Basically, I can spread this text like that. And also, I'm going to give cover picture. In this case, it's going to be this URL and profile picture. And it's going to be profile URL. And finally, after everything, 
I'm going to close this model using this function. And it's going to be false. OK, let's create this endpoint. It's going to be put and update user. Let's call this here and create this function. I will say user. Let's duplicate this. It's going to be update user. But as I said, we are going to need our JWT token. Remember how we are using it. We are taking token. If there is no token, we are going to send this error. If it's not verified, we are going to send this error. And if everything is OK, we can update our user. So I will say const query and update users. We are going to set our name, city, website, cover, and profile picture. And my condition where ID equals question mark. Let's use our DB dot query. We are going to pass our query here and we are going to use our request and body and our elements. And finally, this ID will be our user ID, which is user info dot ID. And after that, error data. If there's an error, we are going to send 500 response status 500. And we are going to send this error. And I'm going to write here one more condition. If data and affected rows bigger than zero, it means we updated our user, we can return our response. updated. If we didn't change any row, it means this is not our ID. I'm going to return response status for row 3. You can update only your post. Okay, let's try. Let's try. I'm just going to write any random inputs. I will update. Oops, 401. I did exactly the same thing here. Oh, it's going to be like that and secret key. I just copied this from somewhere else, I think. I'm sorry for that. Let's try again. I will click. Update. And as you can see, it's updated. But where are our images? I'm going to refresh here. OK, we deleted by mistake. Let's see. OK, we have cover URL. Let's check our user. If we take this properly or not. OK, it's here. Profile picture and cover picture. Maybe. Not null like that. Let's write here anything. OK. And I'm going to try to update only these three. 
I'm gonna refresh. Oh, something interesting here. Maybe let's write it. Like that. So I'm gonna console log this cover picture, cover URL. Okay, right now it returns. Okay, let's do like that. User dot profile picture. Let's delete them. Okay, let's try to upload an image here. I'm gonna come here and choose Actually, I'm going to refresh first. This image, this image, and any text here. Update. Okay, it's not updating. Oh, I forgot here updating my files. So I'm going to say on change and set cover will be event target files first file is going to be a single file and the second one and it's going to be set profile okay let's try again i'm going to choose this one this one and in the text here i'm going to update Let's check, and as you can see, they are here. Okay, and we cannot see them, that because we are not using our upload file. As you can see, so I will say upload. Of course, don't forget slashes here. And let's see, and as you can see, it's here. Okay, it works, but I didn't like this usage. I think I'm gonna update this after this tutorial and you can see in the GitHub repository and I'm gonna give style for this update component also. I don't wanna do this right now that because it's not the design part. I forgot creating this component in the previous tutorial. So I'm gonna update this and here and you will be able to find this in the GitHub repository. And that's all I think. By the way, this is our last post. I forgot writing here order by. Okay, perfect. Like that. We don't have this date that because remember they are null. And as you can see, we don't see our posts. Why this is happening? That because it's undefined, I think, it still tries to fetch this data. Let's see. I will say console log. If there's a user ID right here, there is. If not, not. I'm going to open my console. I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, it says there is. Let's see our user ID here. That because it's a string, remember, we are taking from our query. So I will say, if it's not undefined. And I'm going to do the same thing. Here. Let's see right now. And as you can see, they are here. Okay. So we can fetch our timeline posts. We can like and dislike. We can see its comments. We can write any comment. And 
Maybe we can delete this post. Let's do the last thing and end this tutorial. I want to delete this post. I'm going to open up posts. I will say delete, delete post. And I'm going to pass here post ID. Let's say just ID. And post controller. I will duplicate this. It's going to be delete post. We are going to take our token and try to delete our post. So I will say delete from posts where id equals question mark and also user id will be question mark. That because it should be our post otherwise we are going to return another error because we can delete only our post. I will delete here and I'm going to pass here post ID. Let's say request params.id and our user ID. And it's going to be user info.id. And remember what we are doing. I will say if data dot affected row bigger than zero it means we updated our user we can return this deleted if not it means it's not our post so we are going to return response status 403 json you can delete only your post so you can do the same thing for update post, update comment, delete comment. It's exactly the same thing. There is nothing different. You can find every example of these features. For example, you can create stories. You can delete comments. You can update posts. We did all of these things. If you understood this tutorial properly, there is nothing you cannot do. If you still have, just let me know in the comments or my social media accounts. We will try to help you. Okay, let's open up post. And when I click on this icon, I'm just going to open a small button here, small menu, and we will be able to delete our post. Here, I'm going to say, actually, let's create another use state here, and it's going to be menu open and set menu open it's gonna be false but when i click here i'm gonna change on click set menu open it's gonna be the opposite and after that if menu open i'm gonna show here a button and let's say delete and when I click on this button, we are going to create a mutation. So I will say on click, handle delete. Let's copy this and paste here. And we already have a mutation here. I'm going to create one more, but this time it's going to be, let's say, delete mutation. We are going to call this here. mutate and we are going to pass here our post id and we are going to take this post id let's delete here and we are going to return axios delete posts and this post id this is a parameter remember and after that, it's going to affect our posts. I will save and let's see. I'm going to click, as you can see, delete. I'm going to click here. Okay, it says 403. That means you can delete only your post. There is something wrong. 
they are gone actually when I refresh the page. Let's see again. I will delete. It sends this error, but if I refresh, it's not here. Oh, I said row. It's going to be rows. I'm going to refresh and delete. And as you can see, it's not here. Let's create new one. It's here immediately and I can delete. Let's create another post here and I'm going to change the user ID and it will be John. Okay, we are not following John, I think. Let's say profile one. Okay, we are not following. Anyway, we can test here. If I click, as you can see, we cannot delete that because it doesn't belong to us. But also we shouldn't see this delete button. So I will come here and say if menu is open, but also if post.userID equals our current user ID. Like that. Okay. Our current user is here. And if I click, as you can see, it's not coming. Perfect. Of course, it looks really strange here. I will open up my SCSS file. And here, inside this user, but after this user info, I'm going to say a button. Position will be absolute. And if you are using position absolute, the parent should be position relative. And let's give our position here. I'll say top 30, right 0. I'm going to delete border. It's going to be red, so I will paste this color. And I'm going to give some padding. Finally, cursor pointer. And let's say color white. Okay, perfect. I can open and close. I can delete my message. It's that easy. Okay, guys, it's enough for today, I think. You can add other functionalities here. And don't forget, I just created this application in a couple hours. It means I didn't test it. And some functionalities can be not the most efficient functions. Basically, I'm not giving you a complete application. It's just a tutorial. I'm teaching you how to do things. So if you recognize anything is missing, mistaken, just calm down and go to Lamadev social media accounts and write the problems. We are going to try to fix them. And that's all for today. By the way, I can give here minimum height. It was in home CSS, I think. Okay, it's here. I will say minimum height 100 VH. Okay, as you can see, it was the first mistake I just found. <laughs> so if you find something, let me know in the comments or in the social media accounts. And that's all. I hope you liked it. If you learned something new today, please like the video. You can support Lamadev using the link in the description below or by joining the channel. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.